Hey guys, it's me, uh, Quick Nor, and today we're gonna be reacting to a video called, hold up, Pink Hijab, 15 year old spoken words, what are we gonna scratch my back? Oh yeah, that feels so good, oh yeah, anyway, I remember watching this video since I was 12, and yeah, I know, I can't believe 2018 was like, I don't know, like, 2019 was like four or five or three years ago. No, wait, it's six. Man, times have changed. Anyway, I haven't seen this video, you know, since I was in middle school because I watched this video, you know, back when I was in middle school. And I haven't seen this video since. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, my throat. Let me just get some water. do let's get into the video and react i remember my first hijab wow and i paused for a reason i like her voice her voice sounds so soothing it doesn't really sound american like her accent sounds like not really african or american but it sounds british Kind of British. It sounds like a African British accent. You know what I mean? African immigrants or people from Africa migrate to Britain for a better life. <clears throat> you know. Yeah, I actually do like her voice. It sounds so soothing. She has a nice bun, by the way. Now, in my point of view, when I first, you know, saw Muslim women as a child, I thought they, you know, had a shaven head or were bald. I didn't understand Islam. Then I, like, you know, I started learning about it when I got older and I realized, you know, Muslim women do that because it's part of their religion, yada, yada, yada. Like, Muslims, in my opinion, are the most chill people along with Buddhists. Like, when I was little and even today... I, like, you know, as a young, when I was a little kid, I saw Muslims were very funny. They dressed in funny clothing, which I still find funny to this day in a positive manner. <clears throat> like, literally. Excuse me. And what's her name again? Hold up. Let me just... Wait a minute, her name's something Nyama or something? I'll just call her Nem for short. Yeah. Anyway, guys. Excuse me. I really like her voice. Her voice is really pretty and beautiful and very soothing to hear. I wonder what her singing voice sounds like. You know, her singing voice? <laughs> She has that, I guess, transatlantic voice accent. It's like a mix between, like, a British, not an African, but in my opinion, I think, like, kind of, I hear, I hear a little African mixed with that of a, you know, a British and Atlantic and a, you know, North, let me see, Northern Pacific, like, you know, where England is. Atlantic, no, a Northern Atlantic accent, in my opinion. Yeah, she has a Northern Atlantic accent. I like that voice. A Northern Atlantic accent. That is my scarf. It was pink. Wait, well, I'm sorry, boss. <coughs> I'm going to go back. I remember yeah. my first hijab. That is my scarf. It was pink. Simple, I know, but to. She, excuse me. She looks really pretty in the hijab. Like, you know what I mean. Like, you said what I said, like, before. I thought Muslim women, you know, they were bald or they shaved their hair to have the hijab on, which some Muslim women actually do. But. 
Sometimes they'll just tie their hair in a bun and just wear the hijab over it. Which is actually really clever, by the way. Like, I mean, you know, tying a bun, tying your hair in a bun and wearing and wearing the hijab over it is basically a much more more clever technique than shaving your hair, you know, than shaving your hair to wear it. Seven-year-old me, it was everything. A symbol of my maturity. Yep. I actually agree with her on this one. A symbol of maturity. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, a lot of people, I remember, you know, I think I remember seeing memes that, mus like, Muslim women are beautiful and all that, or... People were talking about at school saying Islam is one of the most best religions ever, better than Christianity, and it gives you more freedom. And I remember people were saying, like, in school and even, you know, when I was in school, and even outside of school on the internet, <clears throat> that Muslim women are the most beautiful women ever than any other women of any other religion. And they always, you know, refer to the Middle Eastern ones. They say, along with the African ones and Asian ones, but still. I guess pink is this is Niema's favorite color. Now, I'm glad she doesn't have that typical black name that doesn't rhyme with it, as in like Aisha or. You know, like Aya and Jasmine, like Aya, Jasmine. You know, Laquisha. You know, a name like that. Like, I'm glad she has an Arabic name because most Muslim girls do have an Arabic name that is kind of hard to pronounce. That I had finally grown old enough to kill my <clears throat> Who's that? Is that her mom? You know, her mother and her older sister? Or just her aunts or cousins? I don't know who these people are. She never even mentions who they are, though. But it's a mystery. And I'm talking about the one wearing the green Chador? Chador? I think it's how you pronounce it. Chador? Like, I just want to say something very nice and very comforting about Muslims. No matter what country a Muslim is from, they're always be the most kindest and most sweetest and most peaceful and most empathetic and most compassionate people in my life. Like, Muslims are really great cooks, by the way, if you don't believe me. I don't care what country they're from. They have the best food out there. Middle Eastern food is actually pretty good. I mean, their fries and their falafel, it's way more healthier than ours in America. I remember one time, let me see, when I graduated high school, one of my teachers took me out to a Middle Eastern restaurant. And you're like, oh yeah, it's not, yeah, it was authentic, but, you know, there was no, uh, let me think. Yeah, none of the women who worked there, like, it was only one woman, a few staff, they didn't dress in Islamic clothing. <clears throat> and this is my first time trying Middle Eastern food. I tried falafel and with, with tornado fries, not tornado, it was twirly fries, the, the falafel was all right. I give it like a nine out, a eight with a nine out of ten. Like it was good, but you know there was falafel mix, and we can do better than that. And uh, people made their own falafel. 
I'll just put in, you know, my my seasonings like garlic powder, paprika, salt, pepper, smoked paprika. <clears throat> and, you know, maybe some Cajun, maybe some cumin and ginger powder and cumin in the for like in the falafel if I ever made that. Yeah, that would be delicious. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, the tornado fries are really good. I actually told my mother, like, the seasonings wasn't just salt and pepper. It was also paprika. Let me see. It was also paprika and garlic powder and cumin. Let me see. And, and, I, and I think a little hint of ginger, like, I guess ginger powder. And a little hint of ginger. They were fried in like a type of oil that stays healthy. Even when it's heated. I I can't remember what kind of oil it is. That's one of the, yeah, that's where it's traditional Middle Eastern fries. Wait, whoops, sorry. Let me just get that out of the way. Bring in the rest of the video. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, I just was checking. Anyway, yeah, the fries had salt, pepper, paprika, garlic powder, cumin, maybe a hint of ginger. I did kind of taste ginger, but it wasn't in a hint of ginger. It had a little heat, like 1% to 2% of heat to it. And the falafel... They didn't have any gyros or shawarma at the restaurant. Yeah, if you want to go there, you know, just go. I don't care. They don't have any shawarma or as a, or any. They do. I think they do have gyros, but not shawarma. <clears throat> and I, you know, I also got a bottle of water. I also dipped the falafel in like a type of falafel sauce that was creamy. And I remember, and I also, you know, asked them, do they have, like, a sauce? I did the falafel and, like, a garlic sauce, because in the Middle East, they have, like, a type of sauce that's, like, a garlic sauce that they did falafel in, in a lot of Middle Eastern and North African, you know, restaurants. I mean, just most of the Middle Eastern restaurants that have like a creamy garlic sauce. Excuse me. They're the falafel one, but this sauce wasn't garlic, sadly. It was just, you know, a Greek yogurt. So I took a bite of the falafel and, you know, I chewed, swallowed. It was all right. It kind of had an earthy taste to it. And then I, you know, dipped in the, in the, you know, the, you know, the sauce. And all, it tasted pretty much kind of better with the sauce. But if it was garlic aioli, I would just dip it up and eat it if they added more seasonings. Like, you know what I mean? I actually want to go to, like, Jungle Gym or somewhere to get, or a Middle Eastern store to get some falafel mix and garlic aioli. So I can make my own falafel at home by, before I, you know, fry it. I'll take the mix and then put in some seasonings. You know, because that is delicious, guys. I love that type of food. Anyway, sorry for taking too long. Anyway, here's back to the video. Yeah. My hair like all my other sisters did. I oh, they were her sisters. I forgot. Yeah. And I forgot, oh yeah, I remember she said in the original video, in the, the video, like, I haven't watched this video in a long time, guys. They were her sisters. I thought they were her cousins or whoever. Or day in, day out, without fail. Even if it didn't match my outfit. Why is she still having that Momo smile? That V-shaped mouth slash smile. Like, every time some character has that look on their face, like, with a V-shaped smile, people are always like, oh, yeah, that's Momo. You know, from the Momo Challenge, YouTube, please don't age restrict this video for mentioning Momo. 
because that's a really stupid. I'm just referencing it. I'm not saying anything bad. Okay? You need to quit acting like that. Like, what's wrong with you white people? Like, what's the problem with you white folks? Always getting offended over some over a word that isn't even a swear word. Like, the word stupid. She's no wonder people don't like you. Anyway, let's go back to the video. I remember bragging about it and rubbing it in the faces of all my other little cousins that I was a big girl now and they were all still children. I remember waiting around the washing machine. Oh, yeah, she bragged to her old little cousins that she's a big girl now. <laughs> Why would you do that? You walked around day and night wearing it. Now, I always wonder to myself, do Muslim women, you know, do they sleep with the hijab on? Because if you sleep, like, with your hair tied in a ponytail or a bun, you're going to lose your hair or go bald. And, you know, I remember watching a video about that. It doesn't matter your gender. You have to untie your hair. You're going to go bald. So the only thing to do is just untie your hair and just sleep like that. You know. And I guess they don't sleep with the hijab on. No one's not supposed to see their hair. Yeah, I'm not being weird. I'm just asking. I was just thinking. Like, you know, anyway, <laughs> she has that cute and adorable little anime girl smile on her face while she's just watching the machine, watching her jab washing the machine. I like her hair, too. Like, I don't know what kind of black hairstyle is that, but is that like an afro? Like, kind of like an afro? It looks like a mix between a black hairstyle and a English, slash, aka British hairstyle. You know, it's Eastern. Is Africa even Eastern, by the way? Excuse me. <clears throat> and like I said, you know. And hanging it, and to this day, I still have it with me. Yeah, it's like the hijab. To, it's like Westerners see the hijab as something weird, while Easterners see it as something normal. Yes, the Middle East is in the East. You know, it's normal in the Middle East and other Muslim countries, while in the West, it's not. Somewhere, underneath the pub, all the other hijabs that I bought over the years. If seven-year-old me had... Oh, so guys, keep in mind, she was 15 at the time, and she's probably now about 20 or 21. I don't know, because I don't, you know, I don't care about age, like, literally. Yeah. Excuse me, about our ages at the time, anyway. And wait, didn't she say other piles of hijabs? What? This girl has worn a lot of hijabs over the years. Before her pink one. So she wore a bunch of hijabs that, w that were not the color pink. And then she just loved it. Excuse me. Why did you kind of stop wearing, not wearing a hijab? I mean, some people are born in between two religions. Anyway, let's go back. At the Naima of today. Naima? Oh yeah, I'm going to call her Naima. Because I thought it was Naima Nahe or something. It was Naima. I totally forgot. She would be horrified. It's unfortunate and I'm ashamed to say it, but I do not wear my hijab. My hijab... Before, before I go on to what she's saying, what do you mean? You did not wear your hijab. Uh-oh. She said if the seven-year-old Naima... Met the Naima today, she would be shocked. Not shocked, she would be horrified or shocked. Because Naima did not wear her hijab. <clears throat> and I'm not going to say any spoilers or anything. Like, I actually feel really bad for Naima. 
she was a really nice, she's a, I mean, I don't, I mean, like, I mean, I just really feel bad for the narrator, A.K. Naima. Like, in my opinion, even though we never met, and I don't know her, and she doesn't know me, keep in mind, this is a real person. I always think to myself, I hope I meet Naima one day, in, like, real life. Like, ever since I first saw the video, I wanted to meet Naima in real life and talk to her and tell her, you know, I'm sorry at what you've been going through. i gone through a lot. You've gone through a lot. And, you know, because we grew up in a Western society. And the West is always going to be like that until whenever. Yeah. Excuse me. And someone said 2001 was the first year to be born with. To be, no, wait, not born, I mean, not born, I mean, born on. Because it's terrible. I always wonder to myself, I wonder what if I grew up in Canada or the UK or Australia? Sometimes I wish my mother just moved out of America and just moved to Canada. Excuse me, and just, you know. And I had a fun childhood in Canada. You know, Canada has a different culture, different lang different languages, different... No, wait. It has... They speak English in Canada, like in America. Yeah. Excuse me. I was thinking about asking Mojang of Sweden to have, like, you know, products and stuff. That are for, you know, people, like, you know, like, merch, like, like, you know, like, food merchandise that's only available in Sweden that will be in Swedish. And Mojang was like, oh, yeah, it's all going to be in Swedish if we, if we make official merchandise only in Sweden. And a lot of people are going to say the Swedish Minecraft food merchandise is way better than the American. Yeah. Excuse me. As me. When I walk in. Wait, did she say that her hijab was pro was a problem? I <clears throat> say it, but I do not wear my hijab. My hijab was me. When I walk in. Oh, I get it. Your hijab was causing problems. As in, what I mean, problems I mean because you're Muslim. You know what I mean. The hijab was the one causing her problems. And I don't want to hear any if she didn't wear her hijab. She wouldn't have problems. People, you know, she wouldn't have problems with Western society. Yeah. Excuse me. Um. That would really be annoying. And not okay. Because she's Muslim. She has to wear her hijab. You know, I mean, she doesn't have to, but still. She has to wear it because it's part of her religion. To a shopping center and a person looks in my direction, I want to disappear. When a person speaks to me differently, thinking that I do not speak English properly, I silently beg the ground to swallow me whole. I hated it. Oh, wow. So, Naima... So, Naima... <clears throat> Sorry. So, Naima hates her hijab. Because she faces, you know, harassment in public, which a lot of Muslim women do, no matter where they come from. It's like when Muslim women come to Western societies like America in the UK, all because of 9-11, they get harassed. Mostly in America, but it also happens in Canada and the UK and even Australia, but it's more rare. In those countries. Like, America is so Islamophobic. So basically, she said that when people look at her differently, like, they never, like, you know, in my opinion, like, in my own words, like, they never seen a person with her, with, you know, her skin color. Or, you know, a person who wasn't Muslim. 
and you know they speak you know they look at her different like that or they speak to her differently thinking she doesn't know how to speak english which is a really offensive stereotype that that you know africans and other ethnic groups cannot really speak have broken english that's very offensive and there's also a stereotype as well about the same thing with disabled people People with autism or Down syndrome speak broken English. What? People are like, what? And I'm like, I know that's not so much it's me doing a voice. And people are like, what? And I'm like, well, excuse me. Like, that person over there is Muslim. They're like, I don't care. I don't care. That's what they need. They're nothing more than a pesky terrorist. And I'm like, you better watch your mouth. I'm gonna... I'm gonna <clears throat> yeah, sorry about that. I stutter. I'm gonna go over there and, you know, just, you know, give them, you know, a piece of my mind. Hey, do you speak English? And then I'm like... In my head, and then I'm like, excuse me, of course that woman speaks English. Like, I'm being realistic. If that happened to a Muslim woman or a girl in public... Like, I would definitely defend her. And I don't care if I get kicked out of the place, if we, or even both of us get kicked out. I am going to protect her no matter what. Excuse me. What obstacles face us? So basically, she says that when someone looks at her differently, guys, you heard in the video, she wants to disappear. And I can feel that. Or when someone speaks to her like she can't speak English properly, which is, like I said before, another stereotype. Not with ethnic groups, but also with Muslims. Muslims from the Middle East, Africa, and even South Asia. Yeah. Excuse me, in Southeast Asia. Like, you know what I'm talking about. They can't speak English properly. Which is a very, you know, racist thing. Like, Naima can speak English. Stop taking off stereotypes. I have met several Muslim women who can speak English. And their English is perfect. It's not broken like, like people think. It's perfect English. Yeah. Excuse me. But anyway, sorry if I'm burping too much. I don't know what's causing that. Anyway, yeah, I'm tapping on my back scratcher. Anyway, let's continue the video, shall we? And for a while, I hated my hijab for it too. Though it was sub So basically as well, I forgot to mention, the woman, I mean, slash, aka girl, so basically Naima hates her hijab because it was causing problems for her. And like I said before, please don't, you know, harass Naima or tell her, you know, if she didn't wear her hijab, nobody would harass her. Because I find that is very rude and offensive to the Muslim community. Not only to her, but also the Muslim community. Excuse me. I remember having this thing called Mr. Fox's Party Rings. And basically, there was these less sweet cookies. I think my mother tried them. They're from England. They're really popular in, like, you know, England, a.k.a. the U.K., but also Ireland. Like, they're really popular in London and Scotland and Dublin and a few other parts of Ireland. Like, both in England and Ireland, they love, excuse me, Mr. Fox's party rings. They go great with tea, they're made with natural colors, you know, and they're also halal too. Excuse me, if I ever find Mr. Fox's party rings, I might as well use them in the cornflower milkshake, along with some Canadian, you know... Canadian, um, oh yeah, Sour Patch Kids that are also, like, Canadian Sour Patch Kids are more healthier than American. They use less sugars, 
less chem- they don't use all those chemicals and preservatives. They use less sugar. They use like natural sugars and natural colors. Same thing with England. Even though like British food is full of sugar and fats, the food is still healthy because same thing with Irish food. They don't put all they don't put in any of those chemicals or preservatives in their food. And you guys know what I mean. So yeah, I did get some like Miss Spears gave them to me, and <clears throat> excuse me, they were also you know halal and kosher friendly. They were halal, you know, they were halal, aka Muslim friendly, and kosher, aka Jew friendly. <clears throat> like everybody can enjoy them, humans. Dogs, goats, like, like, you know, both humans and animals can enjoy them. And I say with animals, you give them a smaller portion because my mother tried them. She said she didn't really like them, but I liked them. I mean, I mean, I crushed it up, you know, to give it to Miss Spears' dogs, you know, in a smaller portion. You know, dogs can't really have all that sugar. That's what my cousin Ryan told me. And a lot of vets and dog experts have said that. When you have dogs, you know, like a little sweet treat, like some honey is okay, but they said, you know, fruit and honey are like, as a, you know, like a kind of like a dessert is okay, but like, you know, I'm kind of speaking off topic to here, but giving them too much could upset their stomachs and all that. So give it to them in like a smaller portion or as a treat. Anyway, back to the video. Sorry if I'm getting on topic. Conscious over a long period of time, I began to change aspects of myself to compensate for the problems that my hijab had caused me. Whenever I caught the eye of a stranger, huh? Wait a minute. Why did her nose change her animation? You know, the animation in the video. So basically, she explains her hijab is causing her, cause, you know, like causing her problems. <clears throat> like, in my opinion, I know it is, but still, I don't care. Like, you're in Western society. Westerners hate the hijab, but in the Middle East... And some parts of Africa and Asia where they where the hijab is worn, you know where Islam is accepted, they don't care. Like, excuse me. Also, why did her nose literally change shape? Excuse me. Like, you know, excuse me, like, why did her nose just change shape from earlier? Did you guys see that? Like, watch the original video and you know what I mean. In the video, like, her nose changes shape. It was like, her nose was like, pointed upwards and then out of nowhere it was like, it just, it just went like, into the shape it is. I know, like, artists, like, you know, keep in mind this is digital animation. And, you know, drawing the same thing over and over again can be tiring. But, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if this is an animation error, or, like, in some animation, like, the characters' bodies, or faces, or heads, or whatever, or even backgrounds, or whatever, would just change. Excuse me. Like, it would just change. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, I just think it. Anyway, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting a little excited. I was just thinking about something. 
about trying Mr. Fox's party rings again. Maybe with some tea. Maybe with some milk. I don't know. I mean, maybe with a mocha frappe. Or, I mean, frappe mocha. I don't know. Excuse me. I mean, I had to ask my mother. Like, these are healthy. These are made with, like, less sugar. They use natural sugar, natural ingredients. And I want to make my own. I just gotta have to... <clears throat> excuse me. Follow the... <clears throat> sorry, recipes. And keep in mind, they'll be in British English, but I don't care. I don't know, like, I guess she's British. She sounds British, so I guess she is. I mean, I'd smile to show how normal I... Alright, that's a really pretty face. I can't believe the animators just did that close-up. Like, the animation team probably didn't make a few storyboards. I guess, and we're like, alrighty, we should do this. I don't know why. <coughs> I don't know why would they do a close-up like that. I mean, she has a really pretty face. Yeah. Animation or not, you know what I mean? Yeah, but still, I, that's a really, like, great shot in background. Uh, yeah. I was. If I ever spoke to a stranger, I would perhaps he changed the way I talked, sound cheery and happy. I did all these things and more, yet it never occurred to me why. Who was I trying to explain my things and more? Yet See how her nose shape changed, like in from the close up to the non close up. Yeah. I don't know if this was on purpose by the animators, but I guess they did that to save time. I like how she explained it in more detail. She would she would smile at them and sound cheerier. And, like, Muslims would do that. Like, 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 you know. But I remember, you know, when I would see Muslims, they would smile and talk cheerier, and I would basically be happy to see them. And I remember one time when I was little on a bus... I said, I love bread. I love non-American bread. I saw this Muslim family, and they said, oh, yeah, you like bread? And, they, and then this one Muslim gave me a piece of the bread on the bus, and I ate some of it, and I put it in my pocket. And I said, yeah, and I said, it's really good. Like, she asked me, is it good? And I said, yep. I said, yes, ma'am, it's really good. Like, like, the bread was actually really good. It was a Middle Eastern, type of Middle Eastern bread. My mother was like, what are you going to say to old Muslim lady gave it to me? And she's like, okay. And, you know, uh, she she doesn't remember it, but I do. And this is when I was around six or seven or eight. But still, uh, like, Middle Eastern bread is way better than American bread. It doesn't have, it has no chemicals in it. No preservatives. And Darian, my therapist, said she's been studying French. And she said French bread, that she said French bread has zero preservatives. <clears throat> And you know how France is, yeah, like, my cousin Mika, she sent some snacks. I should not have said her name, but, yeah, Mika, she just sent some, you know, international snacks sometimes. And boy, oh boy, it was the French snacks, and we tried them, and my mother tried them, she was like, like, some garlic holy chips, she said, I don't like them, I said, I love these, these are, and I said, I'll take some to school, you know, that was when I was in school, and, you know, she said, you know, see, you don't have no preservatives or chemical or sugars and fats in it. And she was like, that. she said she knows about France. She said, I know France doesn't do that. They don't put all them dyes and stuff in their food. And I was thinking about asking a French company that makes potato chips. Like, they didn't use any vegetable oil. They use actual olive oil to fry the chips or avocado oil. To make air fried chips with avocado oil. And I was thinking about asking, you know, like a French company. May not, they may not to be understand what I'm trying to say, you know. Even, they might not be, I mean, I know Europeans are bilingual, but. 
I was just thinking about asking, like, you know, a few French companies that made potato chips and, you know, chocolates. <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. To make, like, cornflowers, blueberry crepes. France, Osmina, the city of love is, like... That one country that just stores the street food in the sewers. Like, French people are very romantic and gross, both present and past. Excuse me, but hey, it's not stereotypes, it's the truth. It never occurred to me why. Who was I trying to explain myself to? To impress. What did that poster literally just say before it zoomed in on her? Hold up, let me go back. I did all these things and more yet. It never occurred to me why. Who was I? Wait, I mean, I gotta... Something. I, I can't really see it. It says, sometimes later becomes never. Did that poster change? Like, go back, you know, pause and go back. Okay? If it changed. Alright. Sometimes later becomes never. That's a really good quote. Not gonna lie. Sometimes later becomes never is such a great quote. Yeah. Excuse me. Why do I have a feeling in an alternate universe we're stuck in the 90s? <laughs> we're just stuck in the 90s or the 2000s. It's like the 90s and then the 9000s and then the 19 and then the, the 19000s and then the 1910s. <laughs> And then next year is the 2000s, and then like 2030 instead of that, it's the 2000s. Excuse me. I'm trying to explain myself to, to impress the public. I hadn't realized it, but I had separated myself and other Muslims from the general public. I could be myself around my family and friends, but the public was something to fear. Shy away from. I could laugh out loudly and. They did another close up of her face. I don't know why. Why are the animators doing that? Wear my hijab normally, but I should keep my head down and my mouth shut around other people? When had I developed such a mentality? I remember when I was nine, I took a walk with my mom and we got shouted at by a group of people in a car. Things like. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, she is nine. Like, let me see. What is this, like a park or something? Go back to where you came from and bloody Muslims. Yep, she's from the UK. Yeah, I'm sorry that was in the video. I know that you, I don't know if I can repeat it. <laughs> but the word, you know, what I mean, you know, when people are like, oh, wow. Like, that guy is all, like, you know, he's all, like, bloody, you know, covered in blood and all that. Sorry, I'm not trying to swear, but, you know, the word bloody is, like, foul, is seen as a swear word in the UK and Ireland. <clears throat> but in America, it's not, so she's in the UK. It was a moment I'd never forget. My mother, a Yeah, like, that's the accent. She had an, an Atlantic accent, kind of. Like, a Northern Atlantic accent. Like, her accent is like a British African accent. Like, a African British ac African British accent. Strong-willed, sassy woman had become a passive little mouse. She looked down, face expressionless, and walked away. In my entire life, I have never hated... 
What city was that in? A piece of material. And why is, you know, her head floating? I always wonder why is free Quran education, Quran, free Quran education, why do the characters' heads just float instead of just being a. I know it's an animation style that many people use, like extra credits, but it's just so weird. Why would they pick that animation style? How do the characters swallow their food? They have a literal floating head, like a non existent neck. How do they swallow their food and drink if their neck is non-existent? So much than I had in that moment. It had never even occurred to me that it was a bad thing. Hijab is something I wish people would see through the dark image that has been stamped upon it. If I could change anything, anything at all, it'd be the bad reputation that hijab has in society for my sake and for all the other young women that are put down and harassed for their decision to wear one. Yeah, I don't understand why the hijab has such a bad image in Western societies. It's mostly, if you guys don't know, it's mostly because of 9-11 and in the Middle East about a stereotype where Muslim women and girls are forced by their husbands and fathers to wear a hijab. Like, and it's all, and because, you know, Iran's mostly in the Middle East, but it's mostly Iran and 9-11. Iran is forcing women and girls to wear the hijab. And they don't want to. Yeah. Excuse me. I want America and Iran to, you know, live in peace. Yeah, I'm just seeing the back scratcher against the bed. The hijab needs to have a positive image in media and not a bad image. All because of, you know, 9-11 and Muslim women being forced by their women, by, you know, women, but by their husbands and fathers to wear hijab and other Islamic, excuse me, female material. In a recent study, it was found that out of the Muslims who do wear hijab, 79.6% have been the targets of verbal threat and physical harassment. One third of the victims had the children present at the time. Most occurred in public spaces, such as shopping centers and train stations. Furthermore, there was no intervention in a shocking three-quarter of the cases. This study was taken in Australia in 2017. That was last year. For a country who prides itself on its forward thinking, we sure now had to take several steps back. The literal meaning of hijab in Arabic is veil. Yep, yep, I can see. This was also in not only Australia, Na Na Naima, but also in England, Canada, and America. So, yeah, countries with a history of colonialism with a mostly Caucasian population, Muslims have been the victims. Muslims, mostly Muslim women, have been the victims there. And there were, and it's all over the news. There were not only videos of Muslim women and and children and families being harassed, but another thing is that when she mentioned physical harassment, it would it would usually be white men doing it. Like like it, it like it like it came to me. White men would mostly do it, this, and it was only white men. They were the ones who would always harass Muslims. Especially Muslim women and commit hate crimes against them in America and other countries with history of colonialism. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Another thing is I. 
White men have done this trend so many times. And it's basically within their culture, which is what people are going to think that's in their culture is, I'm not saying all of them are like that, but all of that, you know, they would, like, rip off a Muslim woman's hijab. Like, it's something funny. Now, if you ripped off a Muslim woman's hijab, you are a very evil and despicable person. I don't care what your gender is, I don't care where you're from, what your skin color is, you're going to literally get karma for that. And I'm sick of, you know, you know, these people, you know, white people are the same people who harass Muslims, especially Muslim women, and take it like it's a joke. Like in one of my favorite books called The Story of Nisrin's Hijab about a, about a Bangladeshi and American girl, which her family immigrated to Bangladesh to Portland, Oregon. Excuse me. It was her grandparents. And, and, and her parents and her mother who immigrated to America because something was happening in Bangladesh at the time. That's why they moved to America. And her grandmother told her the history of after the British, after they colonized, you know, South Asia, like India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. And the British gave control to Pakistan because the Pakistanians had lighter skin. Yeah. Excuse me. You know, India's rival, slash, and at worst enemy, Pakistan. And whoever thinks harassing Muslims is funny, it's not. Because they can still defend themselves. You know, Muslim women need to stop being portrayed as damsels in distress. Barrier. Something that shields you. If I... That was last year. For a country who prides itself on its forward thinking, we sure know how to take several steps back. The literal meaning of hijab in Arabic is veil or barrier, something that shields you. If I choose to wear hijab, isn't it my decision and my decision alone? I was with my little cousin the other day, and you know what she told me? Yep. I certainly know. I'm not going to spoil it. She said, Naima, we're so unlucky. I was confused. You so I asked her decision and my decision alone. I was with my little cousin the other day, and you know what she told me? And you know, Naima, I agree with you. Like, people should stop doing that stuff like that and just see through. And you know, Naima's right. People shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Because, you know, white people are the same people who teach their kids don't judge a book by its cover, but they end up doing it anyway. And then they wonder why nobody likes them. You always, like, you always judge a book by its cover. Like, white people in Middle Easterns have such a bad relationship that they're starting, that there's, like, their biggest rivals. Like, Europeans and Middle Easterners have been enemies for, like, a long time now. <clears throat> it's like something that's part of the European culture. I'm not saying all Europeans and all Middle Easterners are enemies with each other, but it seems like in media they are, and in real life. Isn't it my decision and my decision alone? I was with my little cousin the other day, and you know what she told me? She said, Naima, we're so unlucky. I was confused, so I asked her why, and she said, you and I? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. I actually grew a Naima's little cousin here. You guys are so unlucky. We have the worst combination. We're women, black, and we're Muslim. We might as well sign a death warrant because we'll never be considered equal. It made me sick. A 10-year-old girl like her. 
Mm-hmm. I certainly agree. I shouldn't even have those kind of thoughts. To think that she probably turns away from all these amazing opportunities because she believes something like the religion she practices has made her incapable of taking part in them. What kind of world are we living in? When did it ever become okay to make a young girl feel disadvantaged because she wore a headscarf in public? When a person says that a hijab is oppressive, they are taking away a woman's rights. Yeah, I agree. The hijab was created for a reason. Yes, some people have done this plenty of times and have forced women to wear, like, you know, wear a hijab. But still, just because the hijab is a symbol of oppression doesn't mean it's not. Not all Muslim women and girls are being forced by their husbands and fathers to wear a hijab, like I said before. It's a very racist and offensive stereotype. Speak for herself. How can they make these accusations without putting themselves in her shoes, without taking into account that this was her decision, without understanding the fact they are making fun of a person's decision to live their life a certain way? How can they go to sleep at night? No and uh, Yeah, and I agree with you, Naima. Every time a Muslim is in a public place, white people just stare. Why do you have to stare at somebody who has a different skin color than you? Or who practices a different religion or culture. It's like every time they see a Muslim, they're just like staring at her. Why? You wonder why Muslims probably don't want to be near you. They wonder why Muslims don't want to hang out with you. You hate Muslims. I'm not saying all white people are like this. I'm saying Europeans and Middle Easterns, like I said before, have beef with each other. All because of 9-11. 9-11 hurt America's feelings. And people have said 9-11 is karma to America. And I certainly agree. Yes, I know it was sad and all, and people died in it. But still, this nation, America, the USA, deserves, deserves another toast to karma. It deserves karma. that she now feels ashamed of herself that she now feels oppressed because they thought they could play lawyer for a client who never hired them in the first place I wish people would see that the intention behind hijab is so pure and beautiful I cannot be oppressed by an act I choose to practice myself stop telling me otherwise Stop trying to protect me from an act that you yourself are committing against me. Don't tell me how hijab makes me feel because that is something I should be telling you. I might be young and I might not have half the experience that some people have in this room, but I've lived long enough on this earth to know that a hijab is not a symbol of oppression, but evidence of a decision a woman chose to make. And I can only wish that one day the world will come to understand that too. Ignore something like that anyway. Anyway guys, sorry for that. Anyway, I hope you stop. Anyway guys, hope you guys have a nice time and I see you later anyway and bye.